seems kind of really, uh, it's kind of meltdown at the reactor and the, uh, the reactor uh, problems that they had in Japan. So like, that sounds like real life. And then I think they actually had a lot of robotics cleaning up the reactor. Section one and, and two are autonomous navigation. Uh, section one, most teams use the ultrasound sensors to uh, bounce sound waves off the walls and navigate onto uh, section two, which is uh, they're using uh, light waves to detect the line and pick up on that. And that's really true robotics, and that's probably the most difficult, most programming intensive part. You know, uh, I always say, you know, if it's not autonomous, it's not robotics. And then they switch into a uh, manual mode. There's a design challenge there where they've got to construct a, uh, a claw or an end of arm tooling and uh, pick up the, uh, the fuel rods and kind of contain them as kind of the, the thing. And then uh, next phase is pick up the disaster victim. They got the little dude there. If, if, they, if they don't contain the reactor fuel rods within a certain time period, then the little dude turns into the Hulk. Uh, from overexposure to radiation, and so that, uh, that's a little bit of a mechanical disadvantage. And then uh, the last phase is they got to get out of the disaster wreckage uh, with the, the disaster rescue victim. Well, I hope they're learning some hard lessons about teamwork, you know, integration, systems integration. Obviously, the mechanical systems have to work with the electrical systems and the software. And I just want to see a lot of kids getting excited in uh, STEM education, robotics education. If you're passionate about kids and catch passionate about robots, then uh, probably a good fit for you.